Okay, now that we've saved our Blender file into OB1, I believe it was called, object file, now we just have to figure out how to open it up into MATLAB. And it turns out that's pretty easy because some very nice person has provided some OBJ opening software that's actually a lot better than mine. So what you're going to need to do is download, or I'm not, you don't have to download it. Um, I've already included it in the Volmesh, the new Volmesh tooth uh, zip file. And so when you un unzip Volmesh, you'll find a new directory here called read OBJ and you need to add that directory to your path before you start this process okay and what we're gonna do is read the OBJ file in and then we're gonna proceed through the tutorial file from that point okay so let's read the um, the OBJ file in first and I think at this point I can probably clear everything so I'll, I'll clear all first hope so so I'm starting from scratch. I've already done this process, so I have my commands already in the workspace. <coughs> and the command to read the OBJ is called read WOBJ, which stands for Wavefront OBJ. And the file name is OB1 OBJ. So if I double click on that, it should take a minute and it should read the object file. And it should read all three of the, our objects. The, the sort of cubish thing, the sort of cylinder, and the sort of meta ball. And it looks like it worked, and it looks like we have objects. And it's a little confusing the way this is done, but it works. Um, there's um, there's four fields in this structure for, uh, actually there's 12, but there's four fields per object in this structure. And so I can look at this quickly. I can look at all of these fields, and let's go ahead and do that. Uh, here they are. And the fields are given in the OBJ objects um, um, part of the structure. If I double click on this, you'll see that the first one is a meta ball. And then there's a material, but it's not assigned, so it's just null. And then the third field is just some arbitrary data. I'm not sure what that is. I think that should be the surface normals, but it's, it's also empty. And the fourth object, the fourth data item is the important part. This is the structure that contains the faces of all those triangles. So there's one, two, three, four, so that's object one. Object two has five, six, seven, eight, and object three has nine, 10, 11, 12. All we're really interested in are the vertices and then the, ob the faces which are in four, eight, and 12. So let's go down here and we'll pick out this part here where we do is we we very simply we assign to P the points the object vertices and this is all the vertices for everything and then I've, I've arbitrarily used F1 I could have used T1 T2 T3 or something but okay so for the meta ball the objects the vertices and this is misnamed I'm not sure why they called it that with it contains the vertices of the faces and I double click here and here and here and now I have all three of the objects all all three of the um, of the objects one's the meta ball the second one's that cylinder sh thing and the third one is the is the the big cube you can tell it's the big cube because it has the most vertices okay and it's it's actually quite small the maximum size in from the blender objects was only eight so just just to be um, uh, more along the lines of the kinds of, if, uh, of object sizes that we use, I'm just going to multiply everything by 10. So the largest size is now eight, around 82 so of that object. <coughs> now, just following straight from the tutorial, the tooth tutorial at this time, if we go back up here, we're going to be loading in the... Um, we're going to be loading in the... We, we actually, we just loaded all the surfaces. Um, we use the same technique for the box. We really don't need the plus 10, but I'll leave it there anyway. And then we're going to convert these, these, um, these three objects into Vox S1, S2, and S3. And I've just replaced the, the, um, the nodes and the faces 
in the command. Okay, that's all. So we're going to see that right now. And so we calculate the box. All right, there it is. And now we're going to calculate, actually I'll go down a little further here to where I did this the last. We're going to calculate Vox S1 right here. So it's FP, all the vertices, and then F1. So we're going to get that. It's going to happen really fast. Boom, it's done. That's it. Now we're going to calculate Vox S2. Okay. It's pretty fast. And then Vox S3. Those are our three objects. Okay, and it's done. And now we, we've doubled the size for the for the poly to vox calculation, so we're going to re reduce it back down to its normal size. And there's that one, vox s2 and vox s3. And now, just for the heck of it, we're going to we're going to view it. So I'll click on the the vox vol 3d viewer, and we're going to we'd like to review it all, view them all. So we actually, we won't do that right now. We're going to run the rebuild vox command, which should rebuild everything and remove all the gaps and it's very fast and then we're going to take a look at it using the I am look 3d program and we see starting from the bottom we've got a square that looks that looks like what we wanted and it's kind of curving out it's a square this looks good so far okay and oh here comes that cylinder and we have a cylinder for a little while oh and here's the metal ball okay wow this looks good all right we might as well view it in 3D. So let's view the, the whole object, Smooth 3 of Revol. It takes a minute. Okay, there it is. I can rotate this. And aha, it looks great. It looks like we reconstructed it and it just looks fantastic. I didn't see any gaps or anything. So now we're ready to send it to the Seagal mesher. So we'll save it. I'm going to save save it as, I'm, I'm calling it 3objs.inr, so we'll save it. Go into the Seagal Mesher directory. Still following the tutorial. I won't use tick and talk here. Um, I am going to have to change to, in the tutorial it's going to say class tooth. I'm going to have to change that. Like for instance, if I save it as 3objs, it has, you have to run the mesh wall at 3objs. So I'm going to run it. And as I recall, this took about three minutes to run. And oh, if you're running Windows 64-bit, or if you're running Windows 7, you have to allow it to run. That's a real pain. I haven't figured that out yet. So okay, it looks like it's going. And it's going to take about 30 seconds, so I'm going to pause this until it's done. Okay, it's done. So now, what we have to do is read the mesh back in. So let's go ahead and read it back in. Node elements and surfaces. Make sure we're in the right directory. We need to be in vol mesh. So let's go back up. Read the mesh back in. And there we go. We have nodes, surface, and elements. There's about 12,000 elements. It's not bad. Okay. So we can fix the orientations. This is still following the same tutorial. We're still, we're just down here a little further. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to bother fixing slivers. It just takes too much time right now. And it's not going to make any difference. So let's go back to the main window. For this simple calculation, it won't matter. Uh, let's, we're going to take a, let's view it. Plot multi-D2. Okay, it looks good. It looks like we got a nice mesh. Could be a little bit finer, but this is fine for a tutorial. Perfect. So now we're going to use our faces with nodes command again. And wait for it to display. OK, now we're displaying the faces and the nodes. I'm going to rotate it so that it's straight on. Zoom out. And I'm going to do some selecting now. Let's rotate it so that the bottom is flush. Okay. And now I'm going to do some selecting. Uh, brush. Brush. Create variable. 
tools, brushing, create variable, fixed nodes, and then deselect, click anywhere, select, let's call these the var nodes, tools, brushing, and variable, var nodes, great, okay I can close this now, and now I have my new variables with the nodes selected, and I can move down to the next part, uh, right talk FEA 3D tooth, you might want to take a look at the header first, just to make sure that we have this thing set up right. So we have three materials. Okay, great. Young's moduli, or yeah, Young's moduli. Um, Young's moduli. Um, there's no Poisson's ratio here. Um, it's just updated, and Young's moduli, the same. Okay. So let's give this a Poisson's ratio. Let's deselect this uncommented and let's give all the materials to be the same let's start out the simplest way possible make all the materials the same and everything else is set correctly so now we're going to go ahead and save this and I'm ready to use the right talk fe 3 I mean, it's called tooth for now because I I updated it um, but it'll work on any three three body or three object um, um, model or mesh. So now we're ready to run it. So I'll run right tuck FEA tooth. Okay, that was quick. And now we have to, now that we've we've done that step, we're here in the tutorial. Alright, quite a ways down. We've done this. Now it's time for us to run talk nog. Okay, and I've already set that up over here. And I'm telling it to run talknog.bat 3 objsdat And it takes about six minutes to run this this small, fairly small object and fairly small mesh. <coughs> so in this case, I'm just going to stop it because um, I've already solved this mesh, so I might as well just go straight to it. I hope I can control C. Terminate job. Yes. Enter. Okay, I think that worked. So now I, I'll go to retalk out 3D and I'll run that. Here we are. And this should read. Oh, and make sure you you don't forget to set your the right file name and retalk out 3D. Okay, I've already set that. So it read the file in very nicely. Type scale values with we'll plot the von Mises stress, I guess. And what is n frames? It should be n frames is 10. It's the last frame. We're going to plot the von Mises stress. And here we go. Face plot. Oh, it doesn't look like anything. Okay, so I did something wrong. Um, oh, I know what I did wrong. Um, I lost, when I started the TalkNog, I lost the output file. So I'm going to have to rerun TalkNog. I lost this file because it overwrote it. Alright. So, okay, I'll rerun TalkNog and then we'll get back to it. I'm going to pause it. Okay, it's done. And it played a little bell sound. And it took about five minutes. So let's go ahead and try this reading, reading the file again. Retalk out again. And this time I think it's working, yeah. Because it takes a minute to read this file. Okay, and now we can scale the von Mises stress values for plotting and then give them a plot. And ha, hallelujah, looks like we got something. And I would say this is a pretty good result. I'm not going to try and overinterpret it right now, but you can see that there's stresses in the cube. It's being, I can't remember if it's being pulled or pushed, um, but in any case, there's stresses developing in the cube, and you would expect lower stresses in these corners because they're not really um, being impacted as much by the other material or the other object. So just rotate around a bit, and this is the kind of result you should be able to get. Okay, super.
that's what it looks like. I can plot just for the heck of it. We can do the same thing, um, but instead of plotting the entire model FT. To be able to plot um, let's see if FT is the whole model I'd have to split it up and I could plot the different objects separately if I'm able to split it up here we are this is the splitting up command set so we'll have T1 and T2 and T3. And now I can face plot. Uh, instead of the whole thing, let's try T1. I believe that should be the, yeah, that's the, uh, the meta ball. And it looks like it's all one stress, but that's just because it's, the stresses are pretty high in the meta ball itself. Okay, and you can do the rest for the other objects as well. All right, T3. Let's see what T3 looks like. It should be the cube. All right. That looks good. Okay. So these are the stresses in the cube. Great. Okay, that's it for this little tutorial.